Wow, that's quite an entry. We, we had the politicians, now we have the star politician. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the grand finale at the India Today South Conclave 2023. It's been two wonderful days uh, here in Kovalam. And uh, we have with us to end this uh, wonderful session, the one and only mega star, someone who has gone often where few others have dared to tread. Please give a big hand to the one and only Kamal Hassan. How should I int introduce you today? As actor, superstar, or founder of the Makkal Nidhi Mayam? In what capacity, Kamal Hassan, uh, are you most comfortable at the moment? I'm very comfortable with today. And since it's India today, we'll start with today. I'm a neo political theorist. <laughs> so you can introduce me. No, so what, what comes first? The actor in you or the politician in you? Are you at the end of the day an actor still finding his feet in the turbulent world of politics? Yeah, I think uh, it's not finding the feet. I think I'm uh, financing my sojourn <laughs> with my acting. So you're, you're doing your acting only to finance yes, your political yes. career? I have chosen my trajectory and people have been very kind to me and they've taken care of me for more than 60 years and kept me in an pedestal deservingly or not, I don't know. But I'm very happy for what they've done to me and I'm returning that with thanks, with my participation in their life, in their future. No, you're being rather modest here because, you know, you keep saying you're only in cinema to finance your politics, but your cinema is doing bloody well, if I may say so. You've just had a, another big hit uh, in Vikram. It sort of created huge waves. Uh, if I may ask, and this is for an actor who many thought, you know, now is going to slowly fade away. You're not fading away. You're getting even stronger and stronger on screen. Yeah, the same might happen in politics as well. <laughs> is that more difficult though? Is that, let's be clear, politics, Kamal Asanji, and I think I've asked you this when we first, when you first decided to enter politics five or six years ago, politics is 24 by 7. It's ruthless. Compared to cinema, you find politics far more difficult. Making a cinematic debut was perhaps far easier than making a political debut. No, it wasn't easy. As a matter of fact, in cinema, I have to uh, prepare, write, create the film, and then people will say yes or no. They might cross it off or give me a tick. But here, in politics, I have to work with the people. The script is written by them. I, I think this is a better place to be, comfort-wise, and duty-wise, this is the best place to be. But while you had all these string of big, you know, super hits, your political career has not yet taken off. You, 2021, first time you went big in the Tamil Nadu elections, you all won what? 3%, around 3% of the vote. You also lost uh, from Coimbatore after giving a fight in the early rounds. You all didn't win a single seat. It seemed to me from the outside that here was a film star struggling to make a mark in politics. Is that how you see it? How do you see that period from 2021 till today? Well, um, we now see Kamal Hassan as a star, but I, Keralites here will remember the beginning when Prem Nazir Sahab was ruling as the emperor of Malayalam cinema, and MGR, Shivaji were there, and they said that I had no place. I shouldn't even be here. Small bits, crumbs will be thrown at you. Be satisfied with that. And uh, it wasn't easy because, and for me, the greatest teacher, professor in my life has been failures. I learned from them. And that's how I am sitting here, and that's how I produce Vikram. 
what did you learn from that 2021 defeat? Uh, when you suddenly found I don't have any seats, all my candidates have lost, what did you learn? Nothing. The, I've had films fail where money was at stake. Here it was only prestige at stake. But I'm still fighting for people and I'll continue doing so. So what role are you now? You know, actors change roles and you've been remarkable in the number of roles that you've done. What's your new role? I saw the other day Mr. Sidharamaya being sworn in and there you were on the stage sitting next to, I think, Farooq Abdullah on one side, Sharad Pawar on the other. And there I see Kamal Hassan. Are you, what is your role as part of this anti-BJP alliance, uh, a, a, a Congress-led alliance? What, what is Kamal Hassan's role now? Let me clearly uh, place myself uh, being a centrist. Being a centrist? Centrist. Mm -hmm. My concern is about India, not about parties. I'm party agnostic, so it doesn't matter. India is very important. If it, see, well, I think uh, wherever I am placed, I will do my best for South of India. I'm not being parochial now. Mm -hmm. Kerala is my place, Andhra is my place, Karnataka is my place. And I can call each one of that home and no Malayali will deny me that. And I can say the same thing in Karnataka. It, and I can say that, I said it in Kerala, I'm saying it in Karnataka. So um, for me, s India first, South India is my most important uh, uh, goal, to give it the prestige and placement it deserves. No, but let's be honest. You're saying you're party agnostic, but I haven't seen you going hand in hand with Narendra Modi on any yatra or any visit, but I've seen you going hand in hand with Rahul Gandhi. I see you at the I Congress. Was, I was invited uh, by uh, Mr. Uh, Rahul Gandhi. He called me as a citizen. Dear fellow citizen is how he addressed me. I, I'm yet to receive a letter like that from Mr. Modi. No, one minute, one minute. Are you telling me, Kamal Hassan, tomorrow morning, Narendra Modi is watching the India Today South conclave and says, Kamal Hassan, wants an invitation, tells PMO officials, invite, me, invite him over for breakfast, let's discuss how he can put his party as Absolute. part of a BJP alliance. Will you be part of it tomorrow? No, alliance is a different thing. Breakfast is a different thing. <laughs> no, so you'll have breakfast with Mr. Modi, but you will not ally with the BJP. I, I know, it, it, it's an attitude because uh, it, it's an ideology. For right now, people are very important. Democracy for me is very important in its finest form. So there might be, we, we will agree to disagree. That's no, but when you we'll say do. you're party agnostic, you've made your party preferences very clear. Why not say that I am part of this grand alliance which is in the making and uh, I want to be part of like-minded parties. The Makkal uh, Nidhi Mayam wants to be part of like-minded parties and fight the 2024 general elections as part of that alliance. Now, more important than that is to fight for certain democratic rights for which it doesn't, I will beseech all parties to come together to talk and have a dialogue. I mean, we can even talk about the parliament. I know you will mm. ask questions about it. I will it. ask about that. <laughs> so when, we'll talk about it when it comes to it. The, the idea is alliances are uh, election oriented for for me it's country oriented democracy oriented no no all of that is sounding well i'm trying to understand from you sir the buzz is that in 2024 the makkal nidhi mayam will be part of the dmk led alliance in tamil nadu yes or no are you willing to be part of that alliance why should i say yes or no now especially being a screenwriter the story is being written and we want to know the climax I won't be a, I won't do that spoiler. No, I'm even told that they've decided to give you the Coimbatore seat. The one seat that you all will get is Coimbatore where you will contest. Is that true? Uh, nice story. I like the idea, but we haven't had any discussions like that. But you like the idea? I like the idea, but what is liking and what happens are two different things.
But you know, look at the trajectory you've taken. When you entered politics, you were saying that you were someone offering an alternative in Tamil Nadu politics. You were attacking the AIDMK, you were criticizing the DMK, and you effectively said you'll be part of a third front. In fact, at that stage, I even saw you occasionally with Arvind Kejriwal, and there was a talk that you also wanted to emulate an Aam Admi kind of model for Tamil Nadu. Now we are seeing the possibility of you being part of a DMK-led alliance led by Mr. Stalin. Have you also realized in politics, you have to make compromises? No, I'm not even talking about compromises. I'm talking about coming together, especially south of India coming together. That's the reason why I'm here. I want to pass on the message to not advise but beseech them. It's a moment of truth and you'll have to come together. What do you mean by come together? You're telling me that all the South India states yes. have to come together in some and form have of a grand dialogue, coalition. And have a dialogue with whatever you disagree with, whatever be the party, BJP, Congress, whoever it is. Let's go back to the 70s, then we'll have a different discussion about emergency. No, but you're calling on all the parties of the South yes. to sit across a table. And have a dialogue. On what? on how the nation should move forward, how the constitution should be. And that is why I wrote in a letter to the PM and also addressing the opposition party, not to boycott the parliament, but continue the dialogue, debate. Let's talk about that. You're saying that you believe that the opposition party should not have boycotted the parliament yes. inauguration. Yes. Why? Explain that to us. Because that's my building too. Disowning it is only stifling your voice. And uh, your voice won't be heard. You, that's the best place to be heard. And there are certain things we want to ask questions about the expansion of it and why there wasn't a dialogue with us, with us meaning all of us. So you don't go by the opposition's view that the prime minister was inaugurating the par new parliament building Hence, don't uh, uh, attend that session. You believe they should have attended it. They represent all Indians yes. across India and therefore don't take as a hardline position. Now, as much as they insist that the president should have been invited, I think I would insist that the party should participate because it's my parliament, our parliament. This is your centrism. Is You know, therefore people say if Kamal Hassan continues what they call monkey balancing, you'll fall off the, the tightrope one day. You know, you don't, are you willing to sort of be very clear in taking positions? In, you know, in politics, you have to make adjustments, make compromises. Let me give you some monkey talk. Uh, not Mon to be, monkey bath or monkey uh, bath? No, yeah, not to be confused with monkey bath. Uh, nothing to do with bathing here. So. Uh, I'm talking about monkey balance is a fantastic balance and it doesn't balance on just uh, the biped, it uses all fours and even when it loses balance it can come back up again. So monkey balance is nothing to be ridiculed about. We are entering a phase of politics, you su suggested that you believe democracy is is under threat, am I correct? Do you believe democracy is under threat, no. is in danger? Let me, pay. You, you seem to suggest that these are challenging times for Indian democracy. Always, democracy is not like money in the vault. You keep it there and come back and collect it later on. It, democracy needs constant vigil. And that's what I'm calling for. That's what we should do, all of us, keep vigil and ask the right questions at the right time. Have a debate, disagree, but then understand why things are being done. Consult. What worries you most about Indian democracy today? In the past, you would speak about money power. You've spoken to me about dynastical politics. What worries you about democracy today? Well, I have a litany of woes. Let me make it <laughs> short. I think. I'm, I'm concerned about, not because I'm a lawyer, son, I'm concerned about the judiciary. I'm concerned about the number of seats we are going to get as South Indians in the parliament. 
if it's by population, we must come and have a discussion on it. Because just for good behavior, we shouldn't be punished because we are the highest taxpayers in the country, the south of India. And for that good behavior and controlling our fertility rates and keeping the population down, we shouldn't be punished. So also, you're also coming out strongly against the possibility that delimitation in 2026 could result in more Lok Sabha seats for the Hindi heartland states, which have higher populations yeah, yeah, and fewer you, for you South know, India. But I, I mean, you almost seem to be now playing on a South Indian identity. You're moving from a Dravida identity to talking about a wider but South let Indian me, identity. Let, let me uh, surprise you with one more line. Please do. The Dravidian, the Dravidian identity does not stay only with Tamil Nadu. Dravidian identity is pan-national. Explain that. Yes. Go to Mohanjadaro Harappa, go to Kiradi, you'll find the connection. And look at the race, the mix of the races. Malayalis, Kanadigas, some of them. They are, now we are all mixed, we are a potpourri, but most of them are Dravidians. You look at their lips, look at their eye color, complexion, all that. Yeah, one or two mulattoes like me <laughs> will be there. But I, I think uh, Dravidianism cannot be limited just to Tamil Nadu. Mm -hmm. I've said it in a uh, Morosoli meeting. Morosoli is a... The, new the mouthpiece of the DMK. Yeah, DMK. In that, I said, it cannot just belong. You can't be just the best, and it belongs to the nation. And that's, that's a bigger dialogue. No, but there are, when, when you are talking today about building a South Indian identity, at least a political identity, possibly a social identity, there will be those out there who will say, this is, you know, this could lead potentially to growing North-South friction. That if all the South Indian states, as you're saying, need to come no, together, you you consult tell me, with each other, build a consensus no, no, friction, on limitation. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Yes, interrupt. But you tell me when there'll be more friction, when two states in North India, just two of them, Bihar and UP, UP put together, will supersede by numbers all of the South Indian states put together. Will there be friction or not? So that's what I'm concerned about. That's what I'm worried about. And we should address that. And I'm not talking about appeasing us. Consult us, convince us. For the nation, we are willing to do certain things, but not life sacrifices. So you're telling us that you believe that if any decisions have to be taken on delimitation, where the South will lose out, they cannot be taken without consultation Absolutely. of all the South states. Yes. All, all, all the leaders of the South, uh, of, of the Southern states need to be taken into confidence before any such decision is taken. Yes. You know, I'm getting a sense in this India Today South conclave that we've actually laid the platform for what will become a big issue in a couple of years, delimitation, because several speakers who've come on this platform have expressed similar concerns. Is this going to be the election agenda that you go with to 2024? Vote for us in big numbers so that we will stop delimitation. We will not allow the, the BJP to bring delimitation uh, in 2026. That may not be the primary call, but that could be one of them. It could be. Could be one of them. Because it's, it's, it's something that concerns me as a South Indian. I pay my taxes. Mm -hmm. Um, um, you can ask the IT department <laughs> about my reputation. So, for, I'm concerned. I should not be punished for my good behavior while criminals walk free. Do you worry about some of the other issues which you raised when you first entered politics? Brazen use of money power, dynastical politics, uh, the need to sort of make politics more merit-oriented. You at first said, you know, that when you came into politics that you'll make the Makkal Nidhi Mayam a party with a difference. A number of your leaders left you because they felt you're going nowhere. Uh, 
I come back, the original idea of your joining politics, is it still alive in you or over time has got diluted? No, it is very alive and I'm more clearer. As I told you, failures are my greatest professors. And there are lecturers too, but I listen to professors. <laughs> Let me for a moment, just for a few moments, turn to your other avatar and then we'll come back to politics, of course. Yes. Uh, you know, you had one of your biggest hits, if not the biggest hit of your career in Vikram last year. Uh, at the no, it is, uh, uh, without much ado, it is the biggest hit in the Tamil film industry. <laughs> Ever. Ever. Pretty impressive. Did you, did you think that, how, if I may ask, you were 66, 67, you look very young. Uh, Thank you. You reduced two more years. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but did you think that, look, in what many believe is the autumn of my career, you were doing Big Boss, you were doing other things also, that here I come and bring, give the biggest hit, as you said, in the history of Tamil cinema. What do you think worked for Vikram? I think the film was good and they have not seen too many of such films and not seen too much of me. and. Uh, at the same time, Big Boss, I'm doing the next season as well because it's a great platform for me to talk to people. Now you say that, but many will say that, you know, you spend far too much time still because your love for cinema is so great or your love to be on, you know, do a program like Big Boss. Do you get enough time then to do the rest of the things yes, that you need my, to do as my, a politician? My love for people is far greater. I'm, I'm not but you can't win Tamil Nadu by being, doing Big Boss. You have to do, uh, uh, win Tamil Nadu by traveling across the state. Which I'm doing. Even for this conclave, I, I sort of I had many such uh, engagements. Yesterday night was a very late night. But I keep going around now, uh, not only Tamil Nadu, but south of India. Where does the energy come from? You started your... From, your from sensible questions that you ask. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I, uh, but you, you started your cinema career at, at the age of? Six, four. Four, six. I thought it was six, four. Started at the age of four. Remarkable. You've been doing this for over six decades. And you still seem so remarkably enthusiastic, fresh. And you're, you know, you're getting bigger and bigger with all these hits. Big boss, new audience, younger audience. What keeps Kamal Hassan going? What is this love affair you have with cinema? If I had not been a cinema actor, I'll be a cinema buff. I still am. I love cinema and, uh, and I love people and mm -hmm. both come together when fame comes. And politics is another venue which is not a profession, it's my commitment. You know, but in the last few years, we've seen this since we're talking about South India politically, while South India may feel that North India is dominating them politically, particularly through delimitation. In, in the cinema world, this is a glorious period for films coming out of this part of the world, whether it's the RRRs, the Pushpas, the Bahubalis, the big ticket movies, or indeed the Vikrams. Uh, and you've got all these pan-India stars emerging uh, from the South. You were the original Pan-India star. Ek Duje Ke Liye was early 80s. Uh, are, you, are you in a sense feeling vindicated today when you see South cinema no. make its mark and become no, Pan-India? I'll have to quote Mr. Raj Kapoor. They were finding uh, the, the difference, the divide between art cinema and the kind of cinema that Mr. Raj Kapoor is making. And he said, I, I don't see the difference. Cinema is art. So I don't see the difference. I am Indian and I have talent. And I, there are people who are much more talented than me who are not exposed. The light has not shown on them. It doesn't matter. For me, my greatest doyen guru is Mr. Dilip Kumar. He might speak a smattering of Tamil, that's all. You may not even understand if I express my love in Tamil. But that's how the country has been and that's how it will be. And this is cyclic. It will keep changing like the weather. Uttarayan and Dakshinayan is a great example. The sun will shine 
slightly a different angle, the way of the world. And we did not feel any vindication or even, uh, we can be sportive about it. So are you saying cinema is language agnostic? At the end of the day, good cinema, whether it comes in Telugu, Malayalam, uh, Tamil, Kannada, can compete with Hindi cinema or any cinema and, and, and be replicated now in multiple languages. Absolutely. The, As you did with Vikram. Yeah, I, I think the new international is the regional ethnic. The more ethnic you become, the more international you, you. The more ethnic you become, the more international you, you become. become. Because they really want to know. They don't want us imitating or aping them. They want to know about us. And uh, the world is ready. It wasn't before. It is now, the playground is being leveled. It's not yet leveled, but it's being leveled. You know, and we should talk about uh, this different parochial differences in India. We should aim for the world like Korea did. And that's where I see Indian cinema going. And uh, that's the direction I want to live to see that. So when you saw, uh, if you woke up that morning when the Oscars were announced, RRR wins an Oscar uh, award, do you feel that this is all small steps, baby steps, some small big steps, steps being the, taken the, towards this? The finale will be when Hollywood actors come to receive Indian international awards. Hollywood actors come to receive Indian awards? Yes. That, that, that's been my, not a fantasy, but uh, a vision for India, where they can go. Unlike China or Japan or even Korea, we are an English-speaking country. We have defined our own language with our accents, our guttural R's. All that is forgiven now. We have our own language. Some of the best uh, English novelists are of Indian origin. So I see that will happen in... Uh, and. Mr. Gandhi was international. Mm -hmm. So do you want to be part of a, is that what you'd like to be next? Part of a collab, grand collaborative effort where an Indian production is going global, Kamal Hassan stars in it. Is that what, you know, because you've uh, achieved everything that no, uh, you could uh, have achieved than, in cinema. More than Kamal Hassan starring in it, my company can produce it. I have other things that I told you about. Uh, politics. So uh, my company is now producing many films, and uh, I'm I've started a company called Kamal Hassan's House of Kadar. Kamal Hassan's House of Kadar, and that sells uh, dresses. In we started it in Chicago. We have 12 outlets in America now, and what I'm wearing is Kadi. So. This is what I see. This is my vision for India. You're an entrepreneur, quite a part. So that's another role. You see, you, you, do, you do, do these wonderful films where you play various roles, that famous uh, nine roles that you... Ten are, roles, yeah. Ten roles that you played. Uh, so your latest role is a bit of an entrepreneur who, who looks after all these stores. Is there someone no, managing it? No, 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 somebody is managing it. Like my company, Raj Kamal Films, uh, which was first called Hazan Brothers when we started it. I was 24 when I started the company. So, and it's now in its 40th or 42nd year and in our 52nd production. I wanted to ask you this, that cinema, uh, Kamal Hassan, in a way has become politicized. Uh, you've seen with recent films, Kerala story is an example of it. Some states like Bengal have banned it. In Tamil Nadu also there's a question mark whether it's been banned or it's not being shown in certain theatres. Allegedly because it seemed to demonize uh, the, uh, the Kerala Muslim. How do you see it? Do you believe that no, it I'm, should have been banned? You, uh, let, what let, is your view? Let me talk, now we are talking cinema, I have the... It's the, cinema and politics both. Yeah, but I, I have the right to talk about both. Absolutely. So, as a director, writer, and an actor, I never believed in hyperbole or on the nose kind of films. It has to be subtle, it has to be truthful. And uh, rhetorics and exaggeration uh, uh, sort of takes away the suspended disbelief that cinema actually anchors its whole mm -hmm. philosophy on. So I'm against films which go over the top. I have done some of them. 
That's why I started my production company, so that I could rectify the mistakes. And uh, m most of my productions have been decent films, cinematically speaking. And uh, some have collected, some have not uh, collected so well. But they have been a truthful attempt at cinema, and the content was not blatant and uh, falsified. In your view, is that what Kerala story has done? I have not seen the film. I only heard what people spoke of it. From what I could derive, certain things could have happened, but you cannot increase the numbers, exaggerate the numbers, and make it look like a national crisis. Would you ban the film? I won't ban any film. Let them talk. But I would, I would, I would try to tell people to understand the film and what's the purpose of that film. That's what I'm doing when people ask me about not only care because my film was banned in Tamil Nadu. Vishwa, uh, Vishwarupam. Uh, I'm still people are wondering why it was banned. And uh, there was a case between Rajkamal Films and the Tamil Nadu government. We won the case and we released the film. And I will not advocate banning of any film. As a matter of fact, I was one of the strong advocates of uh, this certification board turning into a censor board and banning or editing films. This country should have free speech. They can certify the film and say certain people could not see the film. And, and you're saying audiences should go to the film with a certain dose of skepticism, recognize perhaps that the film Suspended maker, disbelief. Suspended disbelief. Audiences yes. should go to watch a film like Kerala Story yeah. with suspended disbelief. Yeah. And then think before, because that's, we come from a, a land of filmmakers. You can either be goables or you can be see in another way of Tamil Nadu. The choice is yours. And uh, what did Mr. Anadurai do that Goebbels did not do? I'll tell you, it used to be called Madras. Now it has become Tamil Nadu. I have a list of things that Anadurai achieved through writing just in films and then coming into politics. And the complaint, you were saying that it's a recent kind of a situation where the South, feel neglect, South feels neglected. We felt neglected even before independence. Periyar was one such voice. And another I has said, the North shines and we win. That's been a complaint for a long time. It has not been addressed. You're speaking in a way you know, you're giving a very nuanced answer, which I'm glad on Kerala's story, not black or white. Uh, but it's not just Kerala's story. Last year, one of the big successes was Kashmir Files. Again, there was, the critics said this is a political propaganda film. Both films were promoted by the ruling BJP. Now we've got a film coming out on Savarkar, a biography of Savarkar, and there's talk that the RSS is speaking to a lot of producers, directors, saying, please make such films, we'll fully support it. Do you believe cinema and politics should mix in this manner? Would you advise politicians yeah, to promote a film? Cinema is a medium, like the press. It, you, could, you could talk to the people through it. It, it is not as direct as a uh, stage like this but it still can uh, talk to people. What should not mix is religion and politics. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned, I'm frightened about that. Because around the world, we have uh, examples of things going wrong when it happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's my concern. Otherwise, cinema can talk. You can, in America, they make a Malcolm X, where the majority of them are uh, Caucasian, and they make a film called Malcolm X, and uh, Martin Luther walks uh, in, across the streets in Washington with Marlon Brando beside him. There will be those who will say the best way, in a way, to then promote the kind of ideology your beliefs is make another strong film. 
that tells possibly of the dangers of mixing religion with politics. I have done have it about I have done it about 23 you've years back. You've done a few. Yes, you've done it 23 years back. I'm saying, would you do it now in today's context? W will it be allowed now? <laughs> Sorry. Will it be allowed now? <laughs> Why won't it be allowed? Are you worried about that? You went on the Bharat Jodo Yatra yeah. at a time when many film stars and celebrities were reluctant to go along with Rahul Gandhi, fearing what adverse reaction will it have. Did anyone, was there any backlash? Well, we'll see. We, we shouldn't talk too soon. No tax man has come to your house, has there? They can't, because I pay my taxes. <laughs> they, if they do come, they'll come to collect, respectfully. No, but are you, are you saying somewhere that in that earlier answer that you gave me about, you know, will I be allowed to make such a film? No, you, I'm just no, joking. That, you know, I'll tell you why. Because Rahul Gandhi, with whom you did this Bharat Jodo Yatra, goes around the country saying there's an atmosphere of fear that, that you know, Indian democracy is under threat. Do you believe Indian democracy is under threat? Do you believe that there's an atmosphere of fear? I'd like to amend that by saying that democracy will always be under threat by avaricious, power-seeking politicians. It will always be under threat, and we have to keep that vigil. That's what I said before. I repeat it again, reiterate that democracy is not something you plant and it'll go into a tree. You'll have to constantly watch that. It's not a cactus. It's a gentle tree. We'll have to foster it and make it grow. You know, we're, we're sort of winding down. Uh, on the conversation, but and I want to understand from you, Kamal Hassan, uh, how do you see yourself over the next few years? These are important years, big election next year. There's an election in Tamil Nadu in about two and a half, three years from now. How will you divide your time between your cinematic work and your political work? Will there come a time when you will finally say, I've had enough of this for the next three years, all I will do is just focus on public life. Can that ever happen? Is yes. that possible for yes, you? Yes, I was almost ready to do that, but I needed the money. You know, when you keep saying this to me, I you needed need the, the money, money to run the party because it's a lot of money, and I, I'm Can not even I'm not even paying the voters. <laughs> it's still is costing. <laughs> so I I might have to do it for some time, but then if it comes push comes to show, people are more important than cinema to me right now. Because, you know, Rajni Kant, your great, uh, I won't call him competitor, but two of you were sort of iconic figures for the longest time in Tamil cinema, eventually backed out from politics because I think he felt that I can't devote that kind of time. I don't want to get into this world of politics. I will only focus on cinema. You took the big plunge. Uh, do you have any regrets? Do you think Rajni did it right? Maybe I should have been a Rajni Khan. I could not have just focused. Not at all. Not at all. If possible, if, if only his head, health would permit, I would have convinced him to come back. You mean you would have had a double star, you and him possibly no. together? Let him be in the opposition, but I believe in democracy. We'll agree to disagree. Because as we've seen, South Indian stars have had a mixed track record when they've entered politics. NTR was a huge success, and this is his centenary year. Within five months of joining politics, won a huge election in Andhra Pradesh. Uh, MGR, remarkable success story in, in Tamil Nadu politics. But then you've had a Shivaji Ganeshan, you've had a few others not so successful uh, in their political careers. What is it that you think it takes to become an NTR or an MGR? Or is that era over where you could translate your star appeal directly onto, uh, into politics? Is that era over? I came into cinema when Mr. NTR and Mr. MGR were ruling the roost. In cinema? In cinema. Yes. And uh, I did not want to become an NTR or MGR. I became Kamal Asa. So even in politics, I will not emulate them totally. There are some good things they did. I will try to incorporate them if I am given the opportunity. The reason I am saying this is, as I said, is it more difficult now than it was then? Then it, there was a novelty factor in a way. You know, stars coming in, there were these 
uh, NTR almost is taking his mythological roles from Krishna, Ram to becoming this superstar in, in politics. MGR also, the character was created very carefully by Anna and others so that he could become this big star. Is it more difficult now for an actor to make that transition in, 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 into uh, politics? It Amitabh should... Bachchan, for example, the biggest star of, of Hindi cinema, gave it up, couldn't do it. I, I think it should be made difficult for anyone to just jump into politics and become successful. They must show their earnestness and be responsible. That should be the qualities they should be looking for. And I think they'll find that in me. You know, you, with films like Vikram, reach millions of people, cinema audiences. You go for a rally in Coimbatore, you reach out to a political audience. As you connect with them, what's the difference you find? Is it easier for you to connect with a cinematic audience because you're confident of your craft, as opposed to connecting with a political audience where you're still learning the craft of how to woo them? I don't know whether you saw the footages of people crying and saying, when I lost. They said, what happened to our votes? What happened to your votes? Our votes, my, our votes, they're saying. We voted for him. This is the people, what happened? And I've made people cry in movies, but many people helped me do that. Here, it was just me. I'm happy that I've made that connect with that uh, demography of people. They are not talking about the actor now. They're not looking at a good or bad performance. They're looking at the injustice of it, and I like it. What did you tell that lady who, that old lady who said, I voted for you, but you didn't win? No, I, I watched it on television. So oh, you I, watched it on TV? <laughs> so I, I was moved, that's all I can say. If you were to become the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, and it's a huge if, right? What is the first thing you would do? Right to Services Act, right to information, all that with teeth, not just signing. Once that is committed, when politicians will have to be responsible, that will be the done. Not just me, any chief minister, I'll beseech, convince, and ask him to do that. First thing that you would do, give teeth, to a right to information and a right to services yes. and make who are, and make the politician, including your colleagues, more accountable. Absolutely. Effective in that is you believe today's Since politics. you said if I were to sign it, including me, uh, will have to be answerable. Effectively what you are saying is today's politicians are not accountable. That the not fact is they're not accountable to the people of the country. Let's be honest. The same politicians you were sharing a stage at Mr. Sidharamaya swearing in, most of them, are they accountable? They must be. They must be is different. Are they accountable? They are. They must be accountable. They must come forward and take the responsibility. If they have not taken it, I will be the first critic. It doesn't matter. Alliance or no alliance, my party failing or succeeding, doesn't matter. This is how politics should be. I've just got a question from a friend of mine uh, who's watching and saying... No, I can't call a friend, so you just ask the question. Expectations are sky high from your collaboration with Shankar, director. What can you tell us about the much-anticipated Indian 2? Happening, not happening? I beg your pardon? Happening. Your collaboration with Shankar? Yes, it is. It, excited uh, about it? Very excited. And uh, if people felt that Indian 1 spoke politics, they won't be disappointed with Indian 2. <laughs> okay. You are the ultimate all-rounder. Actor, director, producer. You've been a lyricist? Yes. You've been a singer? You've been a terrific dancer. You've been a cameraman. Assistant. <laughs> You've been an assistant cameraman. 
and you've been a politician. What is that role that you're most comfortable in? In all these roles that you've played, what's the role that the true Kamal Hassan comes to life in? In a democratic country as a citizen of India. As a citizen of India. That's, that, that makes me very proud. That's a politically correct answer. Now, why do you expect politically incorrect answers from me? So I, I thought you'd say that my favorite role was when I was assistant camera person. <laughs> no, I, I, I learn from my past and uh, understand the present and try to forecast the future. As you said, you've uh, crossed all language barriers, geographies, especially in the South. We have a large audience here of people from the wonderful state of Kerala. If you were to give a dialogue in Malayalam… No, no, no dialogues. <laughs> what I said is here, dialogues don't work too well. Truth does. Are a nice line. We also have a few people who come from Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. If you had to say something to them in Telugu. Yen Japalande. Chapindanta Mikartho and Tundi. Adi Manandur Kalasi Jayali. Adi Japutan. What does that mean? What am I to say, sir? You would have understood the purport of this conversation, and we'll all get together and do what we have to do. And when you met Mr. Siddharamaya, you might have exchanged a few words in Kannada. What would you have to, what would you like to say to the new government in Karnataka and Kannada? Uh, Bharatani, we'll have breakfast again too <laughs> with the CM. I've had breakfast with the, the CM many times. I'm promised to come again. Great breakfast. <laughs> he gives. And, then, and then your wonderful language of Tamil to your to your sort of adoring Tamil crowds, what would you tell them in Tamil? I always start my speech with Uire Urave Tamare. That explains everything. It means my life, my relations, and my Tamils. Tamil, the language. You know, in these two, three minutes that you just spoke so fluently and gracefully in all the four languages, You've given us, in a sense, a secret to your magic. And the reason why actors like you, and indeed now being public figures, uh, are looked up to, because you've crossed all boundaries, and in crossing those boundaries, you represent true plurality of Indian citizenship. Thank you. And I think that, in a way, is what you symbolize. Uh, and may you long continue. Thank you. Both Thank in you. acting, in politics, and all the various roles that you play. Is there any one role that you haven't played in out of all these actor, producer, lyricist, singer, dancer? Your you... role. <laughs> I've, always been, the... I've always been asked questions. I never had the chance to fire questions at people. Aren't you doing that in Big Boss, in a way? In a way, but not like you, not as efficiently and effectively like you. Can we do one thing? Can I get paid a little bit of a fraction of what you get paid for Big Boss? I'll be okay. I'll do Big Boss, you do my role. Yes. Done? Done. Done? Done. Wonderful. <laughs> but you've got to make sure that you get negotiate that contract so I get a fraction of what yes, you get. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so we've decided role reversals. I'm going to do the next Big Boss and you have a new 9 p.m. anchor, Kamal Hassan. The ratings will go high. If not anything else, we'll get much higher rating. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been wonderful here to have Kamal Hassan here at the India Today South Conclave, one of the superstars of our generation. Thank you very much for joining Thank us. And Thank Namaskar. Thank you.